Do you want to switch to the new hair system? But without having to lose all of your groom, there are converting options that go both ways. But those basic conversions do not exactly take into account children and deformation effects. For that, we have to reproduce the effects manually. Be aware that the more sophisticated the groom, the harder the conversion. You just need to make sure children are disabled before converting anything. Otherwise, they'll become guide curves too. To convert the groom into hair curves, you just need to go to the particle systems tab. Click on the little arrow on the side and choose convert to curves. Once your groom has been converted to the new hair system, the curves profile will look like thick tubes. A set hair curve profile modifier will fix that. Then, we need to attach the groom to the character mesh or scalp mesh. First, select the surface mesh and its UV map in the hair systems data. After adding a surface to form hair modifier in sculpt mode, you can either go to curves and select snap curves to the nearest surface or apply or attach hair curve modifier. Make sure at rest position in the shape key panel of the surface mesh is enabled. The surface to form hair modifier needs it. You can re-add your hair material to the groom. If your hair curves ended up with a huge point count, you can reduce it using a resample curve node in a new node tree and applying it. The only way I know to get smoother curves is to use the additional subdivision option in the render settings, as the old strand steps option doesn't exist in the new system yet. It doesn't allow for subdivisions per hair system. The only thing left to do is to replicate the settings of the old particle hair system with modifiers. First, the set hair curve profile corresponds to the hair shape panel. The diameter scale is now the radius. The diameter root became the factor max and the tip became the factor mean. The shape values work the same, but the new one seems to be offsetted. You will have to do some guesswork to get the exact same profile as your particle hair. Changing the factor max value to 0.5 while leaving the other values to default seem to correspond to the default particle hair profile. Then, the children. If you were using interpolated children, then you will have to go with the interpolate modifier. If your groom was using a density vertex group, you can copy the group name, click on the little attribute icon in the Interpolate Hair Modifiers tab, and paste the name here. I think this can work for most of the values that have this little icon, though I haven't tested them all. For the amount of children, you will have to do a little bit of guessing with the density value. You will probably have to use a very large value, especially on small surface meshes. If you were using simple children, you can use a duplicate modifier and copy the radius and amount values from the particle settings and paste them directly into the duplicate modifier. A clump guide hair modifier will replicate the clump effect of the old hair system just fine. If you were using the use clump curve option, there are two ways to replicate it. One way is to add a float curve to the geno tree. You can replace the shape input in the tree with a float curve using the factor of a spline parameter node as a value. It can give interesting effects, but it can't be tweaked in the modifiers tab and is not exactly compatible with the other values like tip spread or offset. The other way is to use two clump guide modifiers, one to clump the tip and one to clump the root. That way you can use different values for the root and tips. For the roughness effects, you will have to play with the deformation modifiers, though they're quite different from the old settings. The tip spread value of the clump modifier can replicate the endpoint setting. The noise and frizz modifiers are excellent to reproduce the random options, even though it's quite hard to obtain a nearly identical result. By adding a random value node set to boolean to a freeze node group and plugging it in a boolean math node to add it to the not equal node, only random curves will be affected. Connecting a group input socket to the probability value of the random value node will allow you to tweak the value in the modifiers tab. For the kinks, you can browse through the other hair modifiers especially those under the guide category. For example, the curl hair curves modifier can create big curls or small waves, and the braid hair curves creates, well, braids. I find kink types harder to reproduce, but that's because I never used those when working with the old system. In any case, you'll mostly have to combine clump, frizz, and other hair modifiers to reproduce your original procedural deformations as best as possible. The modifiers are rarely enough on their own. Voila, I wouldn't call it identical or perfect, but it looks like the original groom, and that's good enough. I am sorry I couldn't cover all the settings from both hair system. I just didn't have much experience with the less common ones. Anyway, I hope you'll find this useful. Feel free to like and subscribe for more. Cheers.